and here we go, starting right away to complete all the missions we found at Myers Market. Today, we have a lot of missions ahead of us, so without further ado, let's dive in and explore the first area where the first mission awaits. And here we are at Hearst Industries. Let's complete the city's challenges and finish the mission we need to accomplish. Looting the first houses didn't yield anything too interesting, but now we're about to approach the Rift Anchor. In this area, I found a new monster that looks like the ghost of a quadruped animal. It's pretty strong if you get too close, but if you aim for the head, you can easily stop its advance toward you. So, steady your aim and go for those headshots. Perfect. With our rift anchor activated, we can continue exploring the area. A really tough monster to take down is Mr. Drill here, who is definitely a nuisance and deals massive damage. But if we get a bit of elevation, we can defeat him pretty quickly. Always be careful because when he bursts out of the ground, he can reach even the highest obstacles and deals massive damage. So take your time, approach the fight calmly, and if possible, dodge his attacks. Another interesting monster can be found on the three warehouses next to the barn with the train cars. This monster is located in the second warehouse. It's not very intelligent, but it deals serious area damage if you get hit. So try to fight it from a distance, aiming for the head. Once you've dealt enough damage, the head will detach. Focus on the head first, as it's the one that will throw fireballs at you. As for the body, deal with it afterward. It's not very smart and won't charge at you. Long range attacks are the best way to take it down. As you can see, without its head, it spits out only a few fireballs and they're just around itself. But hey, after all the damage it caused me at the start, it's better this way. Near the fire-spitting monster, you'll find a chest. If you open it, you'll get a nice reward of weapon modifiers. Just outside the warehouse, you'll find a semi-parking area or an outdoor storage space. The first chest will be the usual boxed clown monster that's quite annoying, but hey, inside the container further along, you'll find a nice piece of gold to break down on your disassembly bench. From the storage area where we found the clown, if you move to the left to this parking lot and go up to the small building, you'll find a Morphic Create. I almost died here trying out a series of keys, but forget it. Loot is loot and you have to give it a shot. And we also found a nice gingerbread house. Didn't really need it, but thanks. And while I was making a killing of the undead, voila, a magical surprise, I finally reached level 19. I'm really thrilled with how quickly we're leveling up. Oh, and another monster I forgot to show you is the one we encountered a couple of episodes before the final boss. I don't know why, but now I'm defeating it really easily, maybe thanks to the bonus I chose last episode. Once you've defeated the monster, climb over at this spot where there are two murals on the wall. You'll find another piece of the carton fifth, there. On the path between the two warehouses, number one and number two, where we encountered the fireball throwing monster, follow the trail straight ahead. I took a photo because I thought it was something to capture due to the eye, but it turned out to just be a guide for where to look. Following it, will lead you to the entrance of the first structure. 
which I've commonly referred to as Warehouse One for simplicity, given the three structures side by side. This must be where they got that. Let's go inside and take a look. As RV says, let's see what's inside this structure. Aside from my arrows scattered on the floor, we can continue. And here's another monster spring-loaded chest. Ignore it if you don't need the XP. Marco certainly understood the risks. And no doubt, he made his sister proud. So many lives lost. Men and women willing to sacrifice themselves for the greater good. It doesn't make it any easier, though. Okay, we've found a letter from Marco, Mayfly. Let's read it together. The time for action is approaching, and this may be the last letter I write to you. Everyone is anxious, awaiting the break of dawn, as we are about to embark on a mission that will determine the future of all humanity. Perhaps you don't understand, sister, but after the starfall, humanity has once again found hope. The larvae will break free from their shells and soar into the sky, casting a shadow over the world. Sister, I want to be your pride and bring you a better world. Even if I can't make it back, my heart will always be with you. Love you, Marco. It's a very sad letter, but we must keep moving forward. No matter what happens, we push on. Above the conveyor belt in this barn, we can find another mini-game. Follow and pass through the purple cloud to make the chest spawn. When you open the box above the conveyor belt in the barn, you'll see some machines stacked on top of each other like a transformer. Well, underneath, there's a wonderful surprise for you. Get close and capture it. A new and beautiful deviation in the shape of a frog. While completing the exploration, I came across this timed event. You need to destroy all the eggs within the given time limit. Once all are destroyed, you'll receive a reward. This one might have been even easier than the previous one I encountered. Unfortunately, we found another mini feaster. We're really having great luck with capturing the deviations here. To find the final chest and the mission boss, simply climb up the machinery, leap toward the light and the yellow balcony, and proceed along the metal walkway until you reach the end where the balcony ends. From there, jump to the next balcony connected to the railway depot, and then climb all the stairs. Climb all the stairs and you'll find the boss. Start dealing damage with your ranged weapon right away because it has quite a bit of health. If you open the chest like I did, it will immediately start attacking you. It 
will perform some ranged attacks that are quite dodgeable. It suffers a lot from fire, so if you have the Mega Torch or Incendiary Ammunition, make sure to use those. Once you've defeated it, you can collect its loot. An interesting thing is that when you go back, you can reach the top of the structure by doing a bit of parkour. I almost forgot, there's also a good weapon chest at the top. To your left is the parkour path I mentioned. Enjoy the climb and, well, the view. But now it's time to move on, so let's fly off with V. Once on the ground, I noticed that the truck was available since I hadn't tackled it yet, so I decided to give it a try. managed to stop the truck and now it's time for the assault. Since it was my first time, I was a bit confused. I thought I needed to climb onto it or break the various bubbles around us. Then came my real surprise. As soon as I saw the jellyfish above my head, I realized I needed to eliminate the enemies with me on the truck, and that's where the fun begins.
Unfortunately, the video will end here, but not because I lost. In fact, I won. However, after completing the capture and collecting the rewards, I went on to do other missions. Sadly, OBS didn't capture them due to a power outage, so I lost a lot of data I wanted to show you. But hey, these things happen. I'll see you in the next video, where I'll finish the missions that I was able to record after the power outage. I hope you don't mind too much about missing those two missions and this beautiful victory. I apologize again for the inconvenience. That's all for today. The video is finished. Remember to subscribe to my channel, leave a like or a comment, or both, and activate the notification bell for updates on my videos. Thanks.